Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I've been treating strabismus for the last 30 years. In about 95% cases of a concomitant strabismus, that is non-paralytic strabismus, correct prescription of glasses will straighten the eyes and such a patient will not need surgery. Hence, this lecture is extremely important for all ophthalmologists and all strabismologists. We consider that the uh, prescription of glasses is the job of an optician, but hopefully after this lecture you will start giving the correct glasses yourself and would not rely on your opticians alone. As you will see that wrong prescription of glasses not only produces a strabismus but correctly prescribed glasses will straighten the eyes in any non paralytic strabismus if it's done early. They can correct a strabismus of up to 15 degrees. Hence their proper prescription and wearing cannot be over emphasized. What are the objectives of strabismus management? Number one, to give straight eyes to a patient for his or her lifetime. And number two, only good and equal vision in both eyes will lock both eyes into alignment for life. There is a strong locking mechanism in the brain, which is called sensory fusion mechanism. And this comes into operation only when both eyes have equal vision and they have a clear image formed in space that is perceived as one. However, if the image of the other eye is blurred, or it is dissimilar to that seeing with the good eye then that the image of the bad eye will be blocked the con neural connections of that eye will be broken and that eye will gradually deviate again no matter how perfect surgery has been done so prior to any surgical intervention it is extremely important by the strabismus surgeon to make sure that both eyes are seeing clearly. And this you have to inform your patients. So the natural history of strabismus is that um, only two to three percent of these types of strabismus are true congenital. What is the natural history of strabismus? Surgery is only indicated in the true large angle, essential infantile esotropia or large angle exotropia, which is there due to a congenital convergence insufficiency. On the other hand, in the remaining 97% of the concomitant strabismus, mostly the cause is refractive and that can easily be corrected with glasses and surgery is totally preventable. Most of these refractive strabismuses, either they start as a small phoria which gradually increases to a manifest squint which gradually progresses to a larger and a larger angle with age if correct glasses are not given. And then in a large angle strabismus, secondary changes occur in the muscles and then the eyes cannot be straightened with glasses alone and in such cases glasses as well as surgery is indicated. So before the patient progresses or worsens to that stage of a large angle strabismus, it's important to halt this process by appropriate glasses and uh, exercises so that surgery can be prevented.
This graph should be kept in mind by every ophthalmologist when you are prescribing glasses or you are monitoring the glasses that a child is already wearing. It shows that at birth, 90% of uh, children are born with a mild hypermetropia, which improves to an emetropic state in about 45% or even up to 50% of their children, they become normal by the age of one year. But in the remaining 40 to 45%, the hypermetropia increases. It keeps on increasing gradually till the age of four to six years at which time it stabilizes and then gradually starts reducing. So by the age of 12 to 15 years, all hypermetropes should be off their glasses. But this only happens in children who have been strongly guided by their treating ophthalmologist to avoid extreme close work for long hours. Too much time spent on mobile phones or children who are continuously stooping in, into their books while reading or writing, the hypermetropia increases. Therefore, parents and children have to be strongly advised to stay away from cell phones. The mobile phones should be banned for younger children. They should sit straight and read as well as write with proper light, sitting on a table and a chair. Lying in bed and reading should be totally banned. Parents should be informed that only if these instructions are followed, then the hypermetropia will gradually reduce and the, their children will be off glasses by the time they reach 10 to 12 years. This is just a diagrammatic representation of uh, the uh, physiological growth of an eyeball that at birth the eyeball is about 80, 70 to 80 percent of uh, its uh, normal axial length it gradually increases to the normal level by the age of one year at which about 45 to 50 percent children they become emetrope. On the other hand if a stimulus of blur continues in an eye then about 5 to 10 percent of children the ex increase in axial length overshoots the normal mark and these children will become myopic. The level of myopia will keep on increasing as long as the image from that eye is blurred. On the other hand, about 40 to 45 percent of children, the increase in axial length somehow fails and the eyeballs remain short and hypermetro. The level of hypermetropia gradually then increases by secondary changes inside the structure of the eye. These diagrams just show how hypermetropia produces an esophoria or an esotropia. It has to be remembered that our eye is like a camera and it focuses light rays onto the retina that is the film in our camera. Light rays from a distant object are parallel and by the normal mechanism in our eye they are brought to focus onto the fovea. But in, an, in a hypermetropic eye the axial length is short therefore those distant rays are brought to a focus behind the retina. In order to bring them to focus onto the retina, the natural lens of the eye accommodates and increases in thickness and increases its diopteric power 
so that the parallel right rays are then brought to focus onto the fovea. In the brain, the process of accommodation is closely linked to that of convergence. So as the eye accommodates, it also converges. And the more an eye accommodates to see a clear object in space, the more it converges and this results in an esophoria initially or an esotropia if it is uncorrected. By uncorrected means if we give such a child plus glasses which will increase the dioptric power of the natural lens of the eye then those distant rays will be brought to focus onto the retina without that eye exerting the accommodation power at all. So if no accommodation power is exerted by the natural lens of the eye, the convergence mechanism will also be not activated. So only a correct plus glass in front of the eye will relax the accommodation mechanism in our eye and it will not allow the, that eye to converge as well. So a correct prescription of that plus lens is extremely important. So how do we select that correct plus lens that will relax our accommodation as well as block the whole of convergence mechanism? For this you have to understand that there are ciliary muscles inside the ciliary body which are connected to the lens of the eye via zonules and that ciliary muscle when it contracts it relaxes the zonules and the lens becomes thick it its uh, dioptric power increases and we say that it is accommodated so this ciliary muscle that has an inherent tone like all muscles in the body it is not lying flaccid or toneless but has a tone and that tone exerts a certain dioptric power on the lens which is up to plus 1.5 to 2 diopters so this plus 1.5 to 2 diopters is called a latent hypermetropia and unless you do a refraction with atropine, you will not be neutralizing a hypermetropia of plus 1.5 to 2 diopters. So under normal circumstances, a so-called emetropic person or a normal person will exert a latent hypermetropia of 1.5 to 2 diopters and that is easily corrected by the inherent muscle tone. But if the individual has an error greater than this, then he has to bring the accommodation mechanism into action and he can still get a clear image by exerting the full accommodation and that hypermetropia which is corrected by the full accommodative power of the lens is called the facultative hypermetropia. However, if the person has an error even larger than that it can be corrected by the full accommodation power of the inherent lens of the eye, then the hypermetropia which is still remaining uncorrected and cannot be overcome by accommodation and that needs to be corrected by glasses is called the absolute hypermetropia. Therefore, total hypermetropia is subdivided into a latent portion and a manifest portion. The manifest hypermetropia is again subdivided into the facultative part 
that can be overcome by the effort of accommodation and an absolute part that cannot be overcome by accommodation. So if you are prescribing glasses to such a person, then you have to correct all these types of hypermetropia. Therefore, now you will appreciate what the significance of doing a cover test before prescribing glasses. So if the child is orthophoric and literate, that is above the age of four to five years, then you will only pres prescribe the maximum plus number that will give a 6 6 or 20 20 vision however if the child is converging and is esophoric or an esotropic then you have to do an atropine refraction to neutralize the latent hypermetropia and you have to give a full plus correction that is achieved by that atropine refraction without any deductions and that is a very important principle to break down the convergence mechanism unless you totally abolish convergence the child will continue to accommodate by that plus 1.5 to 2 diopter of uh, latent uh, accommodation and he will continue to converge the eyes will remain esophoric and, or esotropic and the child will lose a foveal fixation and the hypermetropia will keep on increasing as well as the strabismus. This diagram will explain the, that point further that in the uncorrected hypermetropic stage when the patient comes to you the more hypermetropic eye is deviated inwards because of constant convergence because of this constant esotropia there is an extra foveal fixation that eye has never been straightened therefore it loses the foveal fixation and fixation will become fixated to a point temporal to the fovea. So in such a patient, if you do the refraction with cyclopentolate, you are not neutralizing the latent hypermetropia. Please remember when you are doing your refractions, you are correcting one eye at a time. Even though you become very happy that you have achieved a 6 6 or 20 20 UA revision with glasses, but that is done monocularly. And when that patient will wear the glasses and uses both eyes, the more hypermetropic eye in which the latent hypermetropia has not been corrected will still continue to deviate inwards because the latent hypermetropia has not been corrected. So it will continue to accommodate and converge as well and the extra foveal fixation will not be broken and a vision will not improve at all. So only a full cycloplegic refraction done under atropine will neutralize the total hypermetropia that is the latent and the manifest the absolute and the accommodative and so in all patients who are even mildly esophoric atropine refraction is mandatory so this is an eight-year-old uh, boy with the constant uh, left esotropia along with the reduced vision up to 6 uh, 18 so refraction was done under atropine and a full correction given. So a full correction that ensures straight eyes has to be given. Only that will improve the vision and that will correct the strabismus because the convergence mechanism is neutralized. It is not 
brought into play as long as this child continues to wear the glasses. On the other hand, in this patient, the esotropia and the hypermetropia was neutralized by a, a refraction undone under cyclopentylate. He continues to wear glasses, but the vision is also 612. It's not fully corrected because a full correction wasn't given. His eyes have not straightened up because the residual hypermetropia and accommodation and convergence is not being neutralized. Ultimately, the eye, which constantly stays in, muscle changes occur in the medial rectus. The medial rectus hypertrophies as well as undergoes a fibrotic contracture. And then this is wrongly labeled as a partially accommodative esotropia. The point that I'm making is that a partially accommodative esotropia is not a true entity. It is only because we ophthalmologists or opticians are not doing our refractions properly. We are not giving a full correction to these children. As a result, the eyes continue to converge and the medial recti are never relaxed. And since they are never relaxed, secondary muscle changes occur. And therefore, even though later someone gives a full correction under atropine, those strong muscle changes have occurred. They cannot be neutralized. And then this eye will need surgery along with glasses. Another very common scenario that is encountered in clinics is that the patient has an esotropia, but uh, when you do a cycloplegic refraction, there is a mild spherical error and a large astigmatism, a minor cylinder. So what to do in such a case? It is important to remember that minus lenses induce convergence and accommodation. On the other hand, plus lenses, they relax the accommodation along and along with that, the convergence. So in such a patient who is already esotropic, and if you are prescribing minus lenses, then even though monocularly when you're doing the refraction, you make that patient 6-6, six, six, but when he will wear that, those glasses with minus lenses in them and would look binocularly, eyes will converge and turn in. This will keep on occurring daily till secondary muscle changes will occur and then these eyes will fail to relax at all and then you will have to resort to surgery. But since such a patient is hooked onto his glasses, he's addicted to his glasses for seeing, even if you relax such medial recti by surgery, the opposing influence of minus glasses, which are trying to bring the eye inwards, these two opposing influences will result in surgical failure. The other result of a constantly deviated eye is that it will lose its foveal fixation as long as it is wearing those minus glasses and will achieve an extra foveal fixation and gradually will become amblyopic. Till one day, a sensible ophthalmologist will transpose those minus lenses, minus uh, cylinder to a plus cylinder in the opposite meridian. Only then the convergence will relax and the accommodation will relax and the eyes will stay straight and gradually improve and surgery is totally avoided. This is another example, uh, a child, actually a 12 year old girl brought to the clinic uh, with the reduced vision on the cover test for near, she demonstrated ex being exophoric. 
but uh, looking at a far distance the right eye is obviously going out a lot and it has a large XT for far distance. She was wearing her plus correction which was given to her uh, for the last one to two years and that was increasing her strabismus. So in the clinic she was given the minus correction in the opposite meridian and this remarkably reduced her deviation. As you can see the eyes are almost straight wearing the minus cylinders in the opposite meridian. So hopefully this example should clarify that the plus cylinders or plus glasses Sphero cylinders they relax the accommodation and the convergence but the minus cylinders or the minus spheres they induce accommodation and convergence so appropriate glasses can either induce a strabismus or they can relieve it now this is also a very common problem that uh, a patient who was initially isotropic and then surgery was done at the age of three years after one to two years of surgery that is at the age of five years she was prescribed plus glasses a hypermetropic correction because she was not seeing clearly and her vision was blurred now she comes to me at the age of nine years wearing the plus correction for a long time and with the eyes going out so what to do if surgery is done in such a case it will totally fail as this child is now addicted to her glasses she needs the plus correction to look at near as well as far distance on the other hand if she continues to wear the glasses any first form of surgery will fail so the options left are to gradually reduce the plus correction please remember as I told you earlier remember the graph uh, that hypermetropia starts to reduce after the age of five six years and if the patient continues to wear the same correction as he or she was wearing when she was a child of uh, three to four then the eyes will start to deviate outwards because their convergence is totally relaxed on top of that if such a child has had surgery to relax the medial recti then the eyes will deviate outwards very quickly because the medial recti are already very very relaxed so the choice in such a patient or the management plan is to gradually reduce her plus correction once the spherical error is removed or has been brought to zero then the plus cylinder is changed to a minus cylinder in the opposite meridian and that will hopefully bring her eye inwards along with that she is advised convergence exercises as long as she is uh, wearing the plus correction the exercises have to be done by taking the glasses off but once the minus cylinders are given then she should do exercises by wearing the glasses because that will strengthen the accommodation and conversions. This problem is extremely difficult to treat. It needs a lot of patience on the part of the parents and the patient as well as the treating ophthalmologist because there is no shortcut. Such patients may come to you at a later age of 18 or 20 who had a, a surgery for uh, an esotropia in their childhood and still wearing the plus corrections with eyes going far outwards and this is because the surgery initially 
relax the medial recti along with their plus classes which further block their convergence so such an eye is bound to go outwards and in such patients it's extremely difficult because they are approaching the press biopic age and you cannot reduce their plus correction as well so it's an extremely tough situation all this is avoidable if we start taking into account when to reduce the plus classes and uh, once surgery for a convergence strabismus has been done and then how to monitor such patients our job as a strabismologist or surgeons does not end by just doing surgery on such patients and then just getting rid of them because they will sooner or later deviate outwards if they continue to wear their plus corrections. This graph has been taken from Duke Elder practice of refraction and it shows that with age the accommodation also starts reducing it is maximum by the age of five to six years and after that the accommodation effort also reduces so the plus correction has to be reduced gradually because there is no indication or rationale for continuing to give to give the same plus correction for years and years because the need by such a patient reduces as you can very well see in the graph so how to follow up such patients who have been given a hypermetropic correction at the age at a younger age group every follow-up visit should be at six months and at the follow-up a cover test is performed to see if the eyes are straight with that given plus correction if the eyes on the cover test show even a mild exophoria the plus correction has to be reduced because if this is not done the eye will continue to go out and out till it develops a manifest exotropia and that exotropia will continue to worsen as long as the child wears the same plus correction and then he will end up with a secondary surgery for an exotropia but since such a patient is hooked on to his uh, plus correction to see clearly that surgery will fail the exotropia will emerge again bringing a bad name not only to the ophthalmologist but that patient will also be extremely miserable so in order to avoid such problems it is better to perform a cover test with the glasses on at each follow-up visit and then reduce the plus correction gradually in such children till they are totally off their glasses if they are wearing a spherical correction and if they are astigmatic as well then changing the plus spheres to minus spheres after the age of 10 11 years or as soon as they start developing an exophoria now a few words regarding myopia and how does it produce an exotropia well in myopia the axial length is large therefore light from a far object is focused in front of the retina producing a blurred image and but on the other hand light from a near object is uh, divergent the rays are divergent and then these divergent rays they manage to get focused onto the fovea so in order to see clearly such a patient needs a diverging lens a minus lens which will diverge the straight parallel right liar rays of light so that they can focus onto the fovea an uncorrected myope of minus 0.5 diopters can see clearly till a distance of two meters a person who is myopic by one diopter will see clearly only till a one meter distance and a two diopter myopic will see clearly till half a meter but in order to see clearly 
beyond that, he or she needs the help of diverging lenses. So the more myopic patients, their world of clear vision is very much limited to a distance of half or even a quarter meter. So they are restricted indoors with the, and they don't like to go out and their development, their emotional, physical and mental development is gradually hampered. So it's very important to correct myopia as soon as possible. How does an uncorrected myopia result in an exotropia? What happens is that a young myope who is not wearing glasses, his world is limited to near. So when such a myope tries to read, for reading, he will converge his eyes. And as he will converge, because of the accommodation convergence synkinesis, the eye will accommodate as well. And when it will accommodate, it, the vision will be blurred in that eye. Therefore, the more myopic eye will be blocked. The child will abandon convergence in order to stop accommodation as well. Therefore, the, the more myopic eye will diverge gradually outwards. Initially, it will develop a mild exophoria for near and then gradually as the myopia worsens because of the constant blur stimulus. Many studies have shown that the blur signal is very significant in increasing the level of myopia. So as the level of myopia increases, the blur signal increases and a vicious cycle is set up and that eye will diverge outwards more and more again and only one eye will be used by the patient in order to stop or block the accommodation convergence in kinesis. So what are the principles of myopic correction in patients? In children, a weakest minus lens that restores a 6x or 20-20 vision for distance should be given provided such a child is orthophoric for both near and distance. And these glasses have to be worn constantly for both near and distance in order to restore the convergence accommodation relationship at all distances. However, if the child uh, is grossly exotropic or has an exophoria detected on the cover test, then a full myopic correction has to be given that is obtained by a cycloplegic refraction done under cyclopentylate in children under the age of six years and if they are uh, for an older age group then without even a dilating drop and only this full correction will stimulate the accommodation and along with that the convergence and will gradually bring the eye inwards along with wearing these uh, correcting glasses the pa such patients who are developing an exophoria or an exotropia should be instructed convergence exercises with their glasses on on the other hand if in a myope already wearing a correction or under corrected myope is found to develop an esophoria then such a myope should be either under corrected or the cylindrical error should be transposed to transposed to a plus cylinder in the opposite mode. and that is done to block the accommodation and the convergence few words regarding astigmatism correction many ophthalmologists and opticians they are very reluctant to give full cylindrical error on first examination and that is very surprising because there are so many aberrations produced by the normal optical system of the eye that is from the cornea from the lens 
cornea from its anterior and its posterior surface and then from the lens the light rays from the center are uh, focused onto the fovea but from the periphery they are uh, divergent so because of these minor aberrations in the optical system of the eye a point image is not formed on the retina in addition to this if that patient is also astigmatic then because of this stigmatism that point focus is impossible to be achieved and it leads to a blurred image on the fovea and that blurred image will not only increase the myopia but also will produce amblyopia so a full correction of astigmatic cylinder is mandatory in all patient irrespective of their age similarly if uh, the astigmatism is not fully neutralized it will continue to exert accommodation effort on the part of the patient and will produce asthenopia especially if the patient is already hypermetropic and is using the accommodation effort so that will soon be exhausted and these patients with uncorrected astigmatism will continue to complain of headaches and eye strain particularly after reading or any form of close work so take home message from this detailed lecture is that full correction of refractive errors is mandatory and this forms the mainstay of strabismus management i think i cannot overemphasize the need of correct glasses to manage strabismus and then amblyopia management comes as a second step to correct prescription of glasses as already mentioned in the previous lecture so if vision is restored in an already strabismic eye then such an eye will become orthophoric if the strabismus is up to the level of 15 degrees but if it is more than that because of a previous mismanagement with glasses or amblyopia then a larger angle strabismus will need surgery so glasses can avoid surgery in majority of cases of strabismus and this fact has to be kept in mind in order to help your patients better thank you very much